Melanesia is a sub-region of Pacific. And this is the sub-region where Vanuatu, you can see down the bottom there, is a part of. So Melanesia consists of the Fiji Islands, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, and the Indonesian province of West Papua, that's called Papua on that map. This is a region of immense diversity, containing about one-fifth of the world's languages for a total population of less than 10 million people. The Republic of Vanuatu is made up of about 80 small islands and a total population of about 220,000 people, of whom 90% are indigenous. With over 100 distinct languages, Vanuatu is among the highest linguistic diversity for its population in the world. There you can see the list of languages. So if a language group can be considered a culture, then Vanuatu is one of the most culturally diverse nations in the world. Largely as a function of the high proportion of the land and sea area held under customary or traditional tenure, many Pacific states, and certainly the Malaysian states, enjoy an unparalleled level of self-sufficiency in terms of food and material basic needs, as well as embodying in their cultural traditions a very high level of continuity with past generations. What I mean by this is that in Vanuatu, the Solomons and Papua New Guinea, for example, the great majority of people, roughly 80%, live in their cultural and kin-based communities on their ancestral land, satisfy most of their food and other requirements using traditional methods and forms of land resource utilization and sea resource utilization on their ancestral lands and seas. They speak their indigenous language and they're governed by traditional leaders. And most disputes are resolved within the communities through traditional mechanisms. And most people have been involved to some extent in traditionally customary rituals. An important point to note here is the reliance of the majority of the population on the utilisation of resources from their own land and seas for their sustenance, food gardening, hunting, fishing, foraging, using tradition-based methods and knowledge. And this provides most of life's needs for most people. And this is a case also in other Pacific Island states where most people, over half, would satisfy most of their basic needs using traditional methods and resources. And I'll return to this point later. So Vanuatu's culture, therefore, has three main characteristics. There's a great cultural diversity in the country, as manifested in language and cultural practices, although the economic base of all these cultures is similar. Gardening, taro and yam, and that's yams. You can see there yams, bananas and taro. And this is a traditional ceremony that happened a few years ago on the island of Ambram, one of the islands where, of course, large amounts of food are presented between clans. And so the long tubers are the yams. Uh, and then you have the taros on the side, and you see green bananas behind green eating bananas or plantains. The second important characteristic is that these cultures are living cultures. The majority of people live and practice their culture on a daily basis. And the third important characteristic is that they are, by and, by and large, intangible cultures. Because our cultures have no tradition of lit literacy or lit literature, and because almost all material forms of our cultural expression use organic biological materials, which quickly disappear in our tropical environments, our cultural heritage is made up almost entirely of intangible elements that are linked to places in the landscape. This is similar to many other indigenous cultures, which are rich in intangible aspects, but have no permanent material forms, such as written texts or buildings, apart from stones and sites. Another important part of the context of which I'm talking is that Vanuatu is classified by the UN as a least developed country, or LDC. There are many LDCs in the Pacific, and all the other South, South Pacific Island states are classified as developing countries, which is a classification based ultimately on the criteria of gross domestic product or GDP, the amount of production in money terms per person in the country. One of the results of this very low level of GDP is that our Western education systems are quite under, undeveloped and there's a very high level of illiteracy in Vanuatu. So we are considered poor countries on a world scale, sometimes what's referred to as a third world, but what some of us like to call the majority world, to emphasize the fact that poor countries are in fact the majority in the world. 